Hello and welcome everyone to LinkedIn for Salespeople. Great to have you here. Uh, fantastic to see so many people arrive on time. So obviously in sales, you know it's important to be on time, punctual and ready to fire away. So thank you for joining us. I hope that there's lots of value in this presentation today. So let's get started. Uh, what we're going to cover, top 10 techniques for salespeople and 10 ways to use LinkedIn for salespeople and how you can manage that activity in 20 minutes per week. Now, that assumes that you're doing a lot of other things in sales. So if the maximum amount of time you've got is 20 minutes, you can do it. Uh, obviously, most of us in sales would know that we're going to spend longer than that. It could be 20 minutes a day. That doesn't mean you post 20 times a day, though. Uh, and please, if you haven't already, pop the LinkedIn app on your mobile phone, because I'm going to show you a couple of techniques to use with the LinkedIn app as well. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I have written and published four books so far. I, I published a fifth one in November 2020, two years ago, and I didn't have an index, so I didn't print it. So I thought, well, I better print it. But would you believe there have been so many changes in the last two years? I've already added another 40 pages to the book and done lots of edits. So LinkedIn for me and my career business is coming out. So in the meantime, you have access to the first four books free of charge. Uh, you can find them via that link on my website, the latest offer. You can also get 10% discount on my services. So I'm not gonna be pitching throughout the presentation, that's it. Um, and you can also say thank you by following me on social media. So every time I run one of these webinars, I actually, pop this information in the slides. So if you go back and see my previous ones, you will see the number of stats for each of the platforms there. So you can see that they're growing. Obviously my number one platform is LinkedIn. I love it the most, uh, but you know, I've even got 20 followers on TikTok now and 110 subscribers on YouTube. So it's all improving. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, it automatically invites you to subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter. And I've just popped in the chat um, the links there as well, if you'd like to click on those whilst you're listening away. Uh, Rita says, uh, I like the buy me a coffee. Yes, um, this is something I discovered this week, believe it or not, on a LinkedIn audio event. And Keith Keller is a Twitter global guy and he had this buy me a coffee facility on his website. So yesterday I installed it on my website. So if you gain some value, I'd love $5 <laughs> to help support my work. Uh, it takes me about three hours uh, to prepare the presentation. Uh, lots of effort to promote the event. It's, it's about 10 hours work to put, bring this to you. So um, if you think that's worth something, I'd love you to buy me a coffee. And the link, uh, I've just popped in the chat for that as well. So I'll send you another reminder at the end. So for those of you who don't know me, my career started six days after my last year 12 exam at Westpac in Adelaide. And I'm just going to make sure I am recording because it would be terrible. Yep, I am. Um, and I worked there for 11 years and then I moved to Melbourne, found a job, uh, found out I was pregnant, got sacked when I was pregnant, uh, did some research, set up Newcomers Network, which is my first website in 2001. And over the years, I've done a whole bunch of different things. I haven't had a real job since 1994. I'm now a member of these associations, the Melbourne Press Club, the Career Development Association of Australia, Australian Society of Authors, Writers Victoria, and the Small Press Network. They have a conference coming up in Melbourne at the end of the month. And of course, I started 120 Ways Publishing to publish my books. And you can learn more about me on my website. Okay, uh, moving right along. We'll see if we can make this happen. Okay, we've got a problem with PowerPoint there. We'll just make that disappear. Okay, and please pop your questions in the chat. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on where we are all based. If you'd like to mention where you're calling in from, uh, that would be lovely to see. And please, as I said, any questions, I'm going to keep a really close eye on the chat. This is going to be as interactive as possible. I've been on Zoom a long time, well before we had to be on Zoom for various reasons. And um, yeah, I love it. It's a great platform and I love it when it's interactive. So, so please engage. I'll be keeping a very close eye. But I do want to get the content done by one o'clock so that if you have to go, you can. Um, but I'll be 
hanging around for as long as it takes to get through all the questions before I actually stop the recording. This presentation is for everybody of any background. It's not professional advice for your personal circumstances. You can ask for that separately. It's general information. And I've already emailed everybody who's registered the slides and the video recording link and the video recording will be on YouTube on my Sue Elson YouTube channel later today. You can leave your video camera off and your microphone on mute until it's time to chat and everything is correct as at yesterday. That's when I finished preparing it. And um, you can find out more about me on my website. I'll ask you what's most helpful to you at the end. And I'd love you to find a way to say thank you, whether it's the buy me a coffee or do a LinkedIn endorsement where you just vote for my skills, recommendation where you write something, Google review. I got like six reviews out of the last webinar. It was fantastic. And of course, following me on social media is also an option. So, oh, we've already got something in the chat. Let's see what someone said. Elizabeth Craig from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. My goodness. Uh, lovely to see you here, Elizabeth. Uh, isn't that amazing? Like not just in Melbourne, Florida, it's, you know, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Fantastic. So uh, hello from the other side of the world. And I hope you get to enjoy uh, the, the lunar eclipse um, that we had here last night. Okay, uh, this presentation is for salespeople and anyone who supports them. Suggestions and recommendations are based on my experience. And I focus on ethical and attraction based techniques. So um, yes, you know, we can all do prospecting, uh, but that's hard work. And so if we could get some of those opportunities to come to us, that's what I'm going to be talking about. Now, I did run a workshop for a local business group called LinkedIn Super Sales Strategy. So if you'd like to watch that video, it's a slightly different presentation. It's only 20 minutes, so that might be appealing. There's also an article I wrote uh, because I used to get a lot of queries from people who ring me up and want to chat on the phone for 25 minutes and ask me all these questions. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it all in an article and then say, look, I'm really busy. Read this first and come back to me. So how to generate leads, sales and results is a written summary of many of the things we're going to go through today. And where can you find warm leads? Who on earth wants to do cold prospecting? It is so hard when people have no connection with you whatsoever. So there are plenty of places to find warm leads on LinkedIn. Um, Hurricane Nicole headed our way. Oh no, Elizabeth, hope you're safe and uh, please follow any evacuation orders. Uh, you know, your health and safety is way more important than anything else. Okay, um, now LinkedIn has written some recommendations for salespeople. So if you click on that first link, you'll be able to see all the details on what they recommend. There's going to be a lot more in this, but you know, there, there's a good brief start. And you can check out the other webinars that I've run since October 21. I do them every month. So I've just put up the events that I'm going to be running in 2023. Uh, the next one is for migrants, expatriates and repatriates on the 14th of December, and then medical health and nursing professionals on the 11th of January. So they're the next two. Um, heaps of stuff on my blog, publications, presentations, radio, audio programs, videos. And as I said, when you got the email, the slides and everything from today will be there so that you can share them with your team, you can discuss them, you can debate them, you can <laughs> hopefully implement them. That would be even better. Um, so specific sales techniques. Now, although the format of these webinars is very similar, I always tailor them for the particular audience that I'm reaching out to. Now, when I look through the registrations, I notice that there's a lot of people on this particular webinar that are not directly in sales. So they do have to sell because it's their own enterprise or they're a solopreneur, um, but they may not have access to um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So we are not going to be talking about Sales Navigator today, although many of the techniques could apply to using Sales Navigator as well. I guess at the end of the day, a cold call, you know, here I am, I'm Sue, buy my product, 
um, that's going to be hard. And most prospects are going to need, you know, seven to 12 engagements before they purchase. Now, obviously, with some social media platforms that know a lot of information about you, then what they're going to be able to do is they're going to say, well, Sue's already like this, 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 and this. So therefore, she's probably going to like that. And they've already done that seven to 12 engagements before the ad or the the particular item of content appears in my feed. So just keep that in mind as well. And also, please bear in mind exactly the person who wants your product. Now, you might think everybody could have your product, and I'm sure everybody could find some value in most products and services. But there are particular people who would find even more value than the others. And they're obviously your target audience. Now, if you can make sure that whatever you're doing is reaching those people and you're getting those conversions, that's going to work much better. So let me give you an example of this. One of my clients, uh, he came to me after he'd already started, he's prospecting on LinkedIn, and he was connecting to people in organisations that would make the buying decision for his risk management software. And these were in government organisations all around Australia. They're called local councils. And he probably connected to slightly too many people all at once. So LinkedIn was a bit concerned that he was spamming people. So he had to slow down his rate of connections. But after he did that, he prepared a message that he was going to individually message to each of those decision makers in councils who would be interested in that risk management software. Now, as it turns out, he sent it to me first and I edited it because let me tell you, if a council employee had seen his message, they probably would have blocked him, reported him, it would have not gone well. But believe it or not, and he has a high end product worth a lot of money, he had a 40% conversion rate because he found the people who could make that decision. He, you know, provided the information they needed after, well after that he'd connected with them. And then when he sent that out with the evidence in the message, he got a 40% conversion rate. Now, I don't know any other platform that can give you that kind of conversion rate. So this is one of the many reasons I love LinkedIn. But even if you're in sales, people are still going to check you out. So they're going to Google you. They're going to see what your background is. Have you been there five minutes, five years, 50 years? Um, do you know what you're doing in the online space? Is your profile up to date? Do you change jobs every five minutes? And then they'll think, well, I don't know whether I really want to go with this salesperson because they could be gone in you know, five weeks. So uh, just keep all these things in mind. But remember that at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a database and it has a lot of information on there. So if you don't have your information in your LinkedIn profile, and you'll see mine looks like war and peace, it's very long uh, and don't print it out, but it's there to attract search results so that I come up when people are looking for it. Now, if you Google anywhere in Australia, LinkedIn specialist, I'm on page one of Google search results. And if you Google LinkedIn specialist Australia, maybe in Florida, Elizabeth, maybe you can tell me, do I come up in the first page of your search results? So I have optimized my LinkedIn profile for my keywords. So it wouldn't just be a LinkedIn keyword, it could be a risk management software that you could optimize as well. It is also an incredible network and uh, I have used the network on several occasions, as I said, haven't had a real job since 1994. So if I don't have a network, I'm not going to earn a living. So really value the relationships I build on LinkedIn. And please keep a record of what you're doing. So that risk management software business, every time they connected with someone, they put their first name, last name, LinkedIn URL, date they contacted and the sequence of events, when they sent the invite, when they confirmed, when they sent them the first prospecting message, what happened as a result of that, you know. So you are going to need to be logical and systemize your sales approach. Now, if you did have Sales Navigator, you have a prospecting list, you have a leads list, you can do more searches. But again, it's only as good as the data that people have put on their LinkedIn profile. So if they haven't actually entered the information on their LinkedIn profile, you are not going to be able to find them. So that's why it's really important that you um, 
you know, use these techniques first. Because if you can get sales through the organic approach and not even need to purchase Sales Navigator, so much the better. So as I said, please pop your questions in the chat. No question is stupid. If you message it just to me, I will see it and won't announce your name so that you know that uh, nobody else knows that you asked that question. Um, and if you don't feel confident putting it in the public domain, feel free to message me directly later and I'll be happy to answer it. So if you do decide to go down the Sales Navigator path or you're already on it, uh, then there's information about the product itself, how to compare the plans, it's very annoying that it doesn't include the pricing. Uh, but anyway, you have to Google somewhere else to get that. Um, there's sales resources, which could be worthwhile even if you're not purchasing Sales Navigator. And you can contact LinkedIn for a sales demonstration. Now, I have heard from a number of clients that before they purchased a LinkedIn premium product, they had fantastic service. And as soon as they got it and they had questions, crickets. So please make sure that you get all of your questions answered before you pay for your subscription. So make sure in that free one month trial, you test everything, you make sure everything works, you set up your systems, you're all good to go. Don't wait till the end of the month before you implement it. Um, you know, get those questions answered, okay? Now, why even bother with LinkedIn? Well, you're going to be Googled by your prospects, clients, competitors, friends, family, people at parties, fellow students uh, from your school or college days, university days, even on a course. Uh, you know, it's amazing how many people will Google you. If somebody says you should speak to Bill, then the first thing the people, person is going to do is Google Bill. So you need to have those details online and looking as good as they can. Um, now, the next thing is, this could be confronting, do you have your own website? Now, I'm not going to penalise you if you haven't. I've only had mine for 10 years and suelson.com went live in 2012, but my first website went online in 2001. So let's face it, it took me a long time uh, to 11 years before I had my own website, but this is definitely a trend. And the best part about having your own name website is you can put whatever you like on it. You can put a portfolio, background, all sorts of things. Maybe you do have multiple side hustles. You can put all that on your own website. If you don't want to spend money on buying a domain name or website hosting, then what you can do is you can get a free Google website at business.google.com. So you can see mine at sueelson.business.site and that's a free website and Google will rank it because it is a Google product. So uh, feel free to consider that option as well. Here in Australia, there are over 17 million people on LinkedIn, 850 million worldwide. That number is increasing exponentially, particularly in the last two years. And also what I find fascinating, because I thought it was just a bunch of old people, uh, but 59% are under the age of 35. So that's really exciting to me. And I'm really excited to see more young people on the platform. What I would love to see is more variety of content because at the moment it's careers, it's professional, it's networking, it's business stuff, but I'd love to see art and music and creatives and a lot more people on there with different types of content. So back in the day when we had newspapers, we would open the newspaper and it'd be a whole bunch of different stories of different things. And I'd love LinkedIn to be the town square of online content and bring together that amazing variety of good quality content. What I also love is a publishing powerhouse where content that you do publish can definitely last a very long time and give you search results well after it's been published. And also let's face it, no job or enterprise is forever, no matter how good it seems right now. And if you need to write down the details of what you've been doing, it's really good to be able to have that information uh, all there. I mean, I don't remember all the things I did back in the bank. Thank goodness I wrote a 10 page resume before I left because I've actually gone back to that 10 page resume and dug out bits of information many years later. So uh, LinkedIn allows you to write that down so that you don't forget. 
So top 10 techniques for savvy salespeople. I'm going to flick through these slides reasonably quickly because I'm going to assume that you'll have time to go after the presentation through each step on your profile. If you're super fast, put this on one side of the screen and put your LinkedIn profile on the other and you can do these edits as we go. So first of all, you do need to complete your LinkedIn profile in detail, but before you do, it is a good idea to download your data. So it's going to take a few days for it to come through. If you don't know where to find that in the menu of settings, you can just click on that link. And it's a good idea to do this at least every three to six months. Some people have been naughty on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has deleted their account and boom, overnight, they've lost everything. And here in Australia, we've had some serious hacking happen recently. And I'm sure that Microsoft, which owns LinkedIn, is very secure and our data is on multiple servers all over the world by the cloud, et cetera, et cetera. But if we lost our data, you know, I mean, I've got 26,000 connections. I mean, there's no way I could reproduce that information manually. So please download your data on a regular basis. Also think about the keywords you'd like to be found for, describe your achievements, and, you know, talk about your relationship building skills, not just your sales skills. Please do not share any commercially sensitive information. If you said that I've increased profits by $4 billion, that's probably commercially sensitive. Uh, but if you said by 20 or, you know, 79%, they say, wow, that's impressive. But nobody knows the numbers, which is a better way to do it. Also, there's a cheat sheet available for you and you can have your headline. There's a formula I have for that. And you can also remember to ask for recommendations as they come through. Now, this step is very important because what it does is it optimizes your name in Google search results. And it also looks way better on your email signature, your resume, your website, the company website where you work, if you've got a little profile page on there. So please click on that link and change your URL from your first name, dash last name and a whole bunch of numbers and letters to just your name. If that's not available, you can put a dash between your first and last name, or you can put numbers, you can put post nominals, like I've got a Bachelor of Business, so B, B, U, S, um, you know, up to you, but please uh, change your URL. Now, your headline. Here's my formula. Um, it starts off with a label. Now, we all know you should label jars, not people, but every time people see you, when you comment, when you post, when you write an article, they're going to see your headline. So what do you want to be remembered for? And I've chosen independent LinkedIn specialists, even though there's heaps of different things that I do, because that's where I get most of my business from LinkedIn, but also that's what I want people to remember. And it's how I believe I can help people the most. After that, I've talked about all of the different keywords I'd like to be found for, and then something personal about me. So let's say it was for you, you would make sure your photos was head and shoulders with a high neck garment that frames your face and your eyes on the one third line and your hair at the top of the circle. Um, your label, engaging business development manager, who wants a salesperson? Sometimes business development doesn't sound quite so scary. And then keywords, sales, customer relationship, account and social media management, marketing, digital strategy, customer service. And then something about you, love to cook with a little emoji right at the end. And we put the emoji at the end because if someone is using assistive technology, emojis look like a whole bunch of gobbledygook. So you don't want those emojis throughout the headline. You just want them just at the final spot at the end. And if you'd like more tips on that, feel free to click on that link. Now, on your mobile phone, this is why I said it's really important to have your mobile phone with you. This can only be done on your mobile phone. And what you can do is when you click on your face on your mobile phone, you can add a 30 second video. Now you can film it beforehand if you want something looks super schmick, or you can just use your phone straight away, but please keep the camera still and make sure the sound quality is okay. And film it in portrait, and then whack it straight on your LinkedIn profile. Now you can also upload captions. So I put my video onto YouTube, got the captions, then uploaded the captions. Once you've uploaded them, you can't change them. 
but that means again that people who can't have the sound on can watch your video and then you can also add an audio pronunciation of your name lots of people call me ellison but it's elson so that's handy for me to have and you've got 10 seconds to introduce yourself via an audio file and then also on the phone you can add this special link now i changed this just so i could put this on the slide for today but when my book is ready to purchase, I will put this little pre-order form on my website, on my LinkedIn profile, and it will link to my website and voila, uh, we'll be good to go. Now, under this open to button, this open to button is available either on the phone or on the laptop desktop version, but you can add some media images there. So I'm just thinking while you're on your phone, you know, if you want to repurpose some other images you've got on your device, uh, you can add them to the providing services page. Well, this is the quietest group I've had in a long time. We've only heard from Elizabeth and Rita so far. So please uh, ask me questions. Um, you know, tell me what you do for sales. If you want particular tips for particular products or services, I may have a story that I can share. What kind of dancing? Well, that's not quite, quite the question I expect. Uh, five rhythms is the dancing I like. And so it's basically a DJ puts on this different sequence of music. So you start off with flow and then you go to staccato, which is more of a beat. And then you go to chaos and then you go to lyrical, which is more expressive. And then at the end, you come down into stillness. And that sort of cycle goes for about 40 minutes. You dance barefoot, we don't need any moves, uh, you just do whatever feels good and yeah it's a great way as I say to iron out the crinkles, uh, really really good. Um, Rita says she's going a new career line, so can you say aspiring in your tagline? Absolutely, you could say future sales manager and then you'll come up in search results for sales manager. Uh, so that is really cool. I love the word aspiring, it is just fantastic. Um, yeah, and how it works within financial services recruitment sales aims is to be their supplier. Okay, I am running a workshop for recruiters, headhunters, and executive search people in February. So please come along to that one, Hannah. Now, if you are wanting to reach out to people in financial services well before you need to, you know, offer your services, it's a good idea. Like just connect with everybody in financial services, find a way, find groups that they're in, find professional associations that they're in. Like for instance, if it was the Financial Planners Association of Australia, they would have a LinkedIn company page. So you could follow that LinkedIn company page and you could see all the posts that the FPA have put out in Australia and see who's engaging with it and then say, hi, I see you follow the FPA page. Um, I specialise in financial services recruitment. I'd love to connect. And then away you go. Uh, Saffron, business leader, financial services and banking recruitment. Oh, good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so please join me at that. I have been in recruitment. And the reason I left it was because people were treated like widgets and I really hated it. So I recommend to job seekers that they look for recruiters who've been in the industry for at least three years and preferably ones who specialize in their profession or industry because they're more likely to have built up relationships with candidates and companies and they're more likely to want to look after both sides of that equation. So one particular person I know was in HR and she connected in uh, with a lot of HR recruiters and she just kept nagging them until somebody gave her a job and you know she got an amazing opportunity. So yeah, I, I target those people. But look, Hannah, if you've got the background in the industry, that could give you more credibility. But the challenge with a lot of recruiters is they are perceived as glorified salespeople. And so being able to get some recruitment qualifications could be very good. And I've also written an article on should you pay job candidates for turning up for interviews? So please read that because as a result of having been in recruitment, I get very annoyed when recruiters waste people's time and decision makers waste people's time. So for instance, you should never interview more than six people for a job under any circumstances and only put three on the short list 
And anything more than that is a waste of time for everyone. Your recruitment practices should be able to, you know, get to that. But anyway, that's recruitment. We'll come back to that in February. But thank you for the question, Hannah. Great to have you here. Okay. Now, one of the things that's really important with sales is, in fact, all of us need to connect with everyone we meet from now on. So don't worry about all the people you forgot to do this with in the past. It's just from now on, everyone you message, everyone who visits your LinkedIn profile, that's why I have premium so I can see the last 90 days of people who've looked at me and if there's someone interesting there, I'll send them an invitation to connect. Everyone you meet when you're out and about and in person, when you follow the company page where you work, make sure all the other employees in the company that you like, you're connected to them, you're following your company page, where you worked and where you worked previously, when you engage with posts in the news feed, if somebody wrote something brilliant, you loved it, reach out, connect. Somebody wrote a great article, reach out, connect. Look at the people also view. So if I look at Bill's profile and people who looked at Bill also looked at Mary, Rogers, you know, Sam, Alex, whatever, um, then I can say, wow, they look interesting too. And I can, you know, possibly connect with those people. Some well-known people, influencers, uh, people who've been recommended to you. Now, I have found some people at the top of the celebrity ladder uh, are not so likely to connect, but you can still follow and that can be helpful as well. People in those professional associations, some membership organisations have profile pages of members. So I have a profile page on the Career Development Association of Australia website, as well as the Australian Society of Authors. So that means a lot of other members also have those profiles. So you might like to reach out to those people. You can create your own personal database um, via your phone. Maybe there's people you've rung in the past. Make sure all those people are connected with you on LinkedIn. And if you're starting to get too many connection requests, you need to sort of set a criteria. Look, I don't want that many. So therefore, I will only connect with these people. But as a general rule, you can have up to 30,000 connections and an unlimited number of followers. So as a general rule, I prefer to connect with people in Australia. It's my main audience. Um, and so long as I don't feel like they're going to sell me a heap of stuff, I'm really keen uh, to reach out. Now, when this guy who had the risk management software was looking for people in councils, a lot of people did not have good quality LinkedIn profiles. So when you did a search, you couldn't look up procurement council and find them because they just didn't even mention the word procurement on their LinkedIn profile. So what you can do is, and also when you do a search on LinkedIn, it's limited to the people you're connected to and the second level, sometimes the third level connections. So the way to get around that and an unlimited number of searches is through a Google advanced search. So if you click on that link, you'll get a screen um, that will show you the keywords you can pop in. And, and I've got a little slide coming up and I'll show you that there. So as I said before, join or follow professional associations. Um, there are, if you join them, there are multiple ways to showcase that on your LinkedIn profile. So follow that link. And if you don't know what they are here in Australia, the My Future website, which is free to log into, will tell you which professional associations apply to which jobs and industries. Now, don't forget engagement. A lot of people, yes, your LinkedIn profile is one thing, but if you just always say, buy my products, buy my services on LinkedIn, the algorithm is not going to like you. You will win a lot more friends and prospects if you engage with other people's content. So let's say you're interested in prospecting with Bill and um, you've liked his last four posts on LinkedIn. Well, Bill's probably going to remember you when you reach out to him because you've been liking his posts. And don't we all like it when somebody likes our post? I call that being a personal encourager. The second stage is to curate, find something fabulous and share it with your network. So again, not always pitching. And then the third thing is to create and be creative. You can pop videos in, you can do audio messaging, you can do PDFs. So save your PowerPoint to PDF in PowerPoint. You can put up that document. 
So when you click start a post, you'll get this screen. If you click the three dots, you'll get all those choices. Now on the mobile phone now, they've even got templates you can use. So if you're more of a mobile user for posting, um, you can check that out as well. And that link there gives you more details if you're going down that path. Now, I have a company page called Sue Elson. And you might think, well, that's kind of crazy, Sue. You're not a, you know, employee of one. What is the point? Well, the point is I've got, as you can see there, 552 followers. And every time I post on my personal profile, I also post on this company page. And what it means is that anytime somebody clicks on my company page, they can see everything I have shared all in the one spot. And then when I show it on my LinkedIn profile, I've got that little nice Sue Elson Blue logo there as well. So if you do decide to set one up, you can also create a little lead gen form here. So I've got the little need some LinkedIn assistance, get started button. And there's a whole bunch of new features on company pages. So if you're a salesperson working in an organization, please see the admin person and make sure they've updated everything on the company page. There's a lot of new boxes on there that need to be completed, including things like um, your workplace policy, do you work hybrid, do you work on site, and also your commitments to social causes and all sorts of things, really, really good stuff. Now, on your own profile, when you're out and about prospecting, you can have your details visible, but let's say you want to check out a competitor. You don't really want them knowing that you've looked at their LinkedIn profile. So what you can do is you can come in and change yourself from visible to anonymous. And that means when you look at their LinkedIn profile, they won't know that you've checked them out. Now, I leave myself turned on most of the time because if I was prospecting with actual clients, then they would see that I've looked at them and there's a 30% chance they would reach out to me. Other settings I recommend is to turn on creator mode because then you can write newsletters, you can do LinkedIn lives, you can do LinkedIn live audio, you can, um, yeah, there's just extra features. You can have hashtags on your content, your content goes further. If you have newsletters and people follow you, they automatically get invited to subscribe to your newsletter. It's all really exciting. But let's say you just burnt out and you just want to take a break and it's the holidays. You can hide your profile and if it's really serious and you really need time out, you can hibernate your profile and that means that nobody will see it at all. Now, I don't believe you should ever delete your LinkedIn profile, even if you are planning to retire. If you are planning to retire, you can say only want to be contacted for family tree inquiries, but please don't deactivate it because after you've retired and you know, you've know got through all the travel you wanna do and clean up the house and sort out your photo albums, whatever, um, you could be bored and you might wanna reconnect with a few people you know and catch up uh, and you need your network for that. So please don't delete your LinkedIn profile in the future. If you'd like to learn more about LinkedIn creator mode, you can check out that recording that I did with, um, uh, Ken in, in near New York, New Jersey. Um, so that was a really great webinar. Now, statistics. Every salesperson has to keep a record of how well they are doing. Now, if your LinkedIn profile is not getting at least 100 profile views per 90 days, then basically it's not working for you. So the good thing to do is if you're going to go down these steps is download this spreadsheet, which is on that latest offer link, and record your stats. And if you don't know how to find the stats, just click on the links and pop in today's date and write them all down. And then do all my edits. And then in three months time, see how your stats have changed. Now you could also, when you download all your data, you'll see all your connections. So you can make sure the relevant ones are in your customer relationship management system, if you've got one of those happening. Um, and yeah, that's going to be really good for sales as well. And you might also want to check out your social selling index, which is the Sales Navigator product. But if you just click on that link whilst you're signed into your own LinkedIn profile, you can see what your SSI score is now. And then after you've done a few more bits and bobs over the next three months, you can check your SSI again and see if it's improved. Now, please don't lie awake at night thinking, how can I improve this? I haven't found it to be particularly helpful. I've just found it interesting to look at. So 
it's not the number one stat I would check. These other ones are more important and I've given you some indications as to what those numbers could be there as well. So how can you use LinkedIn as a salesperson? Well, first of all, up the engagement ratio. So Bill, like his posts, but like Mary's and Alex, Sam's, all of theirs as well. I like the thumbs up. That's the most common one. The smiley face is a new one. I'm not so fussed about the curious one. I find it a bit passive aggressive. Um, this one is if somebody announces something, you know, concerning, you can show your care. Apparently this one helps posts go the most viral. But anything that's not a thumbs up shows LinkedIn that you've really read the content. So if you can use those other ones from time to time, that could be helpful to you. And there's a reminder there about where you can find those warm leads. Now, you can search within LinkedIn and you can definitely search within Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator gives you heaps more choices and depth of data. Again, depending on whether the person or the company has filled in the information. But um, if you type in, you know, this is a search query on contemporary art and it will give you the choices of all these different options of where to find people. And if you click on all filters, then you get all these choices over here as well. So you can really narrow your target audience down. So a story that I quote very regularly in my LinkedIn webinars is the story of an academic who was working at a university for many, many years and she got a package and she was leaving. And she decided that what she would like to do in the future was help PhD students in science with their PhD papers editing before it was submitted. So she went out and you're not gonna believe this. If anybody wants to have a guess, it's a five figures she paid for her website. Anyone wanna guess how many zeros and numbers were in this quote? I mean, it was unbelievable. Anyway, um, she paid 20, 10, 15,000 retail, yeah, well, you're only five grand off. She paid 20 grand for this very basic website. And she didn't need it. All she needed to do, because let's face it, anybody who's completing a PhD, they want to announce it on LinkedIn. So she could have looked for people on LinkedIn who had written studying PhD and made sure it was in the area of science. And she could have connected with those people and then they would have seen that she edits PhD science papers and voila, she would have had a business up and running. She didn't need a $20,000 website. So again, please try and find the people on LinkedIn who are genuinely interested in what you have as products or services. So this is the Google advanced search. Here I've done procurement and logistics as two key words I want people to have on their LinkedIn profile. And I've chosen the website linkedin.com. I could also choose a region if I wanted to choose Australia or whatever. And then I just click advanced search. And I can go through this and prospect to my heart's content and reach out to those people, add them to my spreadsheet, put them on my systemized sales cycle, and I'll be able to, you know, follow up and go for it. So there's lots of other features that you can use on LinkedIn and you can consider running events. This was a LinkedIn event. Um, I have a newsletter that goes out once a month. You can run polls. I'm not a huge fan of polls. They were very popular for a while. They've sort of waned a little now. Articles are fantastic because they appear in Google search results. Video, a lot of people like video, but if you're going to go down the video path, I think you need to be reasonably consistent. A lot of people seem to do sort of 10 videos at once and then nothing for three years. Um, it's very weird. Um, so try and sort of even it out a little. Um, and then of course there's audio because Clubhouse was a huge success during COVID and Twitter Spaces is the audio version of Clubhouse on Twitter and LinkedIn Audio is on LinkedIn. And you get to do reactions, which is really cool. There's no recording facility at the moment, but if you love the Clubhouse experience, uh, then you could definitely consider uh, running a, a LinkedIn Audio event as well. The only reason I'm not a huge fan of that type of event because it can't be recorded and reused um, I don't have the time to do a one-off kind of thing. I prefer to do something that can be uh, reused in the future.
So don't forget to update your LinkedIn profile at least every year. Lots of things can change in a year. And don't forget to mention both your experience and voluntary experience. And if you've got some really important people in your life, you might have some amazing mentors or sales trainers or people you love, their content. If you're connected to them or you're following the company page, there's a little notification bell. And if you click on that, there's a good chance that you'll see most of their content. So keep that in mind as well. Um, these are my analytics from yesterday. So I'm getting 1,300 profile views per 90 days and appearing in 750 search results. If that number, this is seven days, this is 90 days. So if that number is roughly half of that, it means that search is working for me as well as my reputation. So you want both of those uh, to be doing well for you. Uh, now, this is a little technique. So if you're out and about, you grab your phone and you press in the search box and you'll see some little dots. Then when you press those dots, you will have your QR code. So you will also have the alternative screen, which is to scan the code. So to show you these instructions, you press in the search box, you press the dots, you press scan, turn on the camera on your mobile phone. And then once the camera is turned on, you scan the person's QR code. So if I'm just meeting you at a networking event, I put my phone over yours and you will see three buttons, a blue one, a message button and three dots. And you press the three dots and then you choose personalized invite. Nice to meet you at the LinkedIn for Salespeople webinar. And then you send off the invitation. And that way, when the person receives the connection request, they remember where they met you. If it was, you know, they remembered it was a LinkedIn event, they'll do search on their messages and they'll find you again. You know, many good reasons why you could personalise the invite. If you're meeting, you know, 10 people all at once, you might just want to hit the connect button instead because you don't have to type a message. Um, but I really encourage you wherever you can to personalise those invitations. If you know you're going to be at a networking event, you could prepare a little spiel, put it in the notes on your phone and copy paste it into those messages as you work the room. And don't forget to do it when you meet at board meetings because you know if you show everybody, well, I'd love to connect with you and you show them that technique, they think you're a digital whiz and um, then you've you know, got access to messaging them in the future. Because let's face it, who remembers Oh, you know, everybody's name. And the best part is when you get back to your desk, you can click on the My Network button and see those people who've recently connected with you. Nice to meet you at the board meeting at XYZ today. Um, here's the follow-up document I said I'd share with you and, and away you go. So uh, really good strategy from now on to connect with everyone you meet personally and professionally. So even people you meet, you know, over drinks uh, at a bar with a bunch of friends, they're going to know at least 250 people quite well. And you never know, your next lead could come from one of those people. So the more people you're connected to, the more likely you will appear in search results. Okay, now you do need to set goals. If you say, I want to get more sales, yeah, okay, so you got more sales today than you did yesterday, whoopee chook. But if you set a goal of, I want to get, 150 sales by the end of the month uh, with a total revenue of X, Y, Z, uh, then you're much more likely to get it. Now, let's face it, even if you only got 75 of them, you're halfway there. But if you just said, I want to increase my sales, you might not get there. So please set your goals. And then on that open to button, as I said before, you can put in providing services. And a lot of people have not filled this section in on their LinkedIn profile. So if you can talk to the services you provide, then, or if you've got a side hustle, uh, then definitely you could consider popping that in there. And you can see here, you can also add media. So you can put in product and service images in there as well. Please abide by any social media policy of the organization. Some people in sales will be required to download their connections before they join the organization and then compare them with the ones that they have at the end. As a salesperson, it is my view that if you're doing work on behalf of an organization, 
you should add that prospect to the company database, not just to your own personal LinkedIn account. And, and please be respectful when you leave that you don't sort of drag all the clients from your previous employer to the next one. It's not good form. It's not really ethical. Uh, I mean, sure, maintain relationships and all that kind of thing. Um, but prospecting in that gene pool, I don't think is a good idea. Be aware that there could be some negative people out there, so be ready for that. And I have the view that we should always remain professional. I'm never aggressive or disrespectful in anything I write, even if somebody has been very disrespectful to me. I will always adopt the friendly and professional, not the personal. So whilst Manesh has asked me about what sort of dancing I do, would it be something that I broadcast in infinite detail and do a video of me dancing on LinkedIn? No way. Uh, and thank goodness nobody's asked me to be a dancer for them <laughs> as a result of me having that word on my LinkedIn profile. But if you're bound to leave your job, you know, there are some things you should do before you quit. And also before <laughs> you sack someone, thanks Manesh. <laughs> if you want to put up dancing because it's your gig, you know, and you're good at it, go for it. But yeah, mine's strictly to iron out the crinkles, uh, not for performance. I'm a hopeless at remembering steps anyway. And I get sidetracked by the sound of the music or, you know, a bird flying past or something else. So it uh, wouldn't be good. Uh, now, the next thing is you can write articles. As I said before, they will appear in Google search results. And a lot of people will come to you and say, look, should we just pay for LinkedIn ads? Now, in Australia, the audience size is small. And if you want to run a campaign, you've got a minimum spend every day. And LinkedIn doesn't know as much about the people on LinkedIn as a platform like Meta does, uh, Facebook and Instagram. So targeting people can be much harder. If you are going to go down the ads path, you definitely need to speak to a LinkedIn ads specialist, not just an ad specialist, a LinkedIn ads specialist. AJ Wilcox is the world guru on this kind of stuff, uh, but I've written a version for the non-gurus around uh, about whether you should pay for social media ads. Why would you spend $5,000 to a large corporation when $5,000 spent elsewhere could have actually led to sales? And I use this example of working with schools. So a school that I worked with spent $15,000 advertising on a real estate website for the local area, thinking that when people move to the local area, they'll, they'll check out the school information. So they spent 15 grand. They didn't get one new student from that advertisement. But if they had spent $5,000 each on afternoon tea, for all prospective parents and students at three of the local feeder schools. They would have supported the local bakery. They would have you know, made a lot of people happy with free muffins. And I'm sure they would have got a lot more people considering their school as a future destination for their child attending secondary school. So please think about your spend. How can you spend the money within the local community to specifically target the exact type of client that you are looking for. Now, as I said, a number of the people who registered for this event are in their own little business and just wanted to know about sales. So I just wanted to remind people that the number one thing that you own if you're in sales is your website. Everything else, you know, it could disappear tomorrow. So Google, if it's looking at your website, will not just say, right, let's send everybody to that website, it's the best. It wants to know, are you active on social media? Do you have listings on other websites? Do you have links on other websites, particularly websites with a high domain authority? Do you have reviews on multiple websites? Not just Google, but on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on special directories, you know, like Urban Spoon for restaurants, uh, whatever. So there's a few more tips in there, a little bit outside the banner of sales, but definitely worth considering. And at the end of the day, consistency is the key. Keep showing up. A lot of people get sales because they just keep following up and they just keep going back to the people who've purchased before and say, is there anything we can else, else we can help you with? Is there anybody else you know who could benefit from our products and services? And please keep learning. Since I completed my university studies in 2000, I've been attending up to four events 
every single week for 21 years or 22 years, um, you know, ever since. It's just so important. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Here in Australia, if you have a local library card, you can get access to the LinkedIn learning courses for free. They are very good quality. Most of them are conducted by Americans. So uh, for some people, there will be a little bit of a cultural difference, uh, but they're generally excellent quality, good video, good text, you know, really, really worthwhile. And you can list up to 50 of those on your LinkedIn profile. How can you do all this in 20 minutes a week? Well, log in, engage with the newsfeed, respond to your notifications, follow up any network connection requests, engage with the content. Remember, if you've got that notification bell on, you're more likely to see their content in your newsfeed or your notifications. Um, edit your own profile. Maybe there's a new feature. As I said, so many things have been added to LinkedIn in the last two years. Check out your stats. Um, give kudos to somebody. Everybody likes it when you say thank you. And not just when you say thank you, but when you say thank you for X and you provide those details. And if you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter, you can do that. So from this session, I would love you to pick three things you can do. Maybe pop a video on your phone, start using the phone to connect with people and change your URL. That's three really quick things you could do, which would be fantastic. Because if you don't do three things straight away, you may do nothing from this lovely hour that you've spent with me. So really encourage you to do that. You can see the recording for this event later today at LinkedIn for salespeople on my website publications, presentations, video recordings. Next webinar is on LinkedIn for migrants, expatriates and repatriates who I have been working with since 2001, which because Newcomers Network was that first website. And if you would like some professional services, mention this webinar and I'll happily give you a 10% discount. If you're also overseas, you don't have to pay GST, so you actually get a 20% discount. So that's cool. Um, and here's the list for next year. Isn't it exciting? Uh, lots of new audiences in here that I haven't written content for in the past. So like scientists and technical professionals, you know, I'd love to see more of these types of people on the platform. And you can also check out all the previous webinars and recordings. A lot of them, some of the content similar, but there's strategies and tactics for each different audience. And I, I love it when there's a bit more engagement as well. Don't forget, you can download those first four books and you can also follow me on social media. And thank you, Rita, impressive list for next year. And uh, if you want to scan this now, you can spend five Australian dollars, it's even less in US, and buy me a coffee. I would really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, thanks in advance if you choose to do that. Or otherwise, pop a comment in the chat now what's been most helpful to you, uh, any other comments you'd like to make. You can do a Google review by clicking on that link. If you don't have a Google account, you can just do it on my website. You could even create a social media post with a link so that you can share it with other people as well. Hannah's asked, is there a prime time to post on LinkedIn where engagement is at its peak? Well, Hannah, this depends on the audience. Now, at the end of the day, consistency is key. So if you are a very busy person and you can only do things by organising 12 weeks of content in advance and scheduling it to go out 10 o'clock local time every Tuesday, then do it. Like if that's what's going to work for you, just do it. People will still see it after 10 o'clock. But the reality is that people are on LinkedIn at different times and in different locations. So I have an international audience. And believe it or not, I've actually found that posting Friday evening on Australian time works really well with my international audience. I've also found the odd post I put out on a Sunday does really well as well. Really bizarre. So it's always going to depend on your audience. And one of my clients, uh, we put out a post for him and it got picked up by somebody in a large organization and then everybody in that large organization because this person was so well connected it went to all of them and within like four hours it had four thousand views he couldn't believe it it was unbelievable and another thing i was on national television recently and i put the video up online as soon as i could after the event it was quite late in the day and then a few days later 
I provided a link to a blog post that I wrote about it and I pinned it to the top of the comments. And it originally only had 6,000 views, even though it was a video and it was well recognized. And then within 24 hours, I had 26,000 views. So by adding that post a few days later and pinning it to the top, it took off. Could I replicate that? Who knows? But if I turn up every week with a piece of content, that is the way to go. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tough question. A lot of people ask it all the time, um, but we can't predict. It all depends. Like if you wanted to reach audience of parents picking up children from school, you would schedule it for the time when they might be sitting in their car in the car park, um, that sort of thing. So you've really got to think of your audience. So that's the slides. And so what I'll do now is I will um, come back to the main screen. Um, and as I said, lots of insights gained and I've left an endorsement. Thanks so much, Sue. Look forward to it any more in the future. Love to have you. Now, when I turn off sharing the screen, your details will appear on the screen. So if you don't want to be on the screen, don't turn your camera on. Uh, and if you want to just listen, that's fine. Uh, but I would love to just be free form and allow anybody who would like to unmute or raise their hand with a little reaction button. And I will happily answer any other questions you may have. A very nice picture of a Muppet on there. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Or have I answered all the questions? Thank you very much, Sue. We'll definitely be taking a few tips from this webinar. Thank you, Ryan. Especially the profile video on LinkedIn. Good, well done. Yes. Hey, look, if you want to mention the three things you're going to do as a result of this webinar, that could keep you accountable. Uh, so that's another option if you'd like to do that now. And as I said, if you don't feel comfortable asking me a question in front of the group, thanks, Rita. See you next time. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly. As I said, I'll be popping this recording on YouTube, my Sue Wilson YouTube channel, later today. Any final questions? Anybody just want to say hello? Uh, Elizabeth, would you like to tell us how you're preparing for Hurricane Nicole? If you're still there might be packing her emergency bag as we speak. So, ah, oh, how does what are three things? Excellent. Uh, video on a profile, get your profile up to date and add my URL to my signature. Well done. Now, Hannah, there is a feature on LinkedIn which enables you to do a rather sexy uh, LinkedIn profile URL if LinkedIn is the only one you're going to be sharing. I'm not a fan of this because... Some people that I communicate with don't necessarily have all the bells and whistle features on their email program. So it's not going to work for everyone. But if you want to go sort of next level and you want it to look sort of super special, if you go into LinkedIn and you choose edit your public profile URL, so we'll just visit the profile. So just by clicking on your face and edit public profile and URL. This is where you change your URL to just your name. But if you scroll down on the right-hand side, what you'll see is if the internet comes back, we're in a first world country in Australia, you'd never know it because our internet is awful here. Uh, but down here on the right, you'll see this create a badge. And it gives you a couple of choices as to what you want it to look like. And you copy that code in and you can end up with this type of little badge, uh, small, medium, or large, extra large. As I said, I'm not a fan of it. I just put my LinkedIn URL link in and make sure it opens in a new window and anybody can see it even if they've got plain text on their email, uh, but that's another option. Uh, Ryan said, video on LinkedIn, keeping track of messages, have been lazy and looking more into the analytics. Yeah, don't forget Ryan, if you go to that latest offer, you can download the Excel spreadsheet so that you can just put in your stats from there. So you don't have to prepare a spreadsheet in the first instance because all those numbers are real time only. LinkedIn doesn't give you sort of a running total of them. So it's really good to keep a record. And then also when you report to your sales manager about what you've done, you can say, this has been the growth, this is what's happened, et cetera, et cetera. Francisco is from Mexico. Woohoo! 
or Mexico. Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, lovely to have you with us. And fantastic that Australia can go out to the world. Uh, that is super cool. Does anybody else have any other questions in relation to their LinkedIn profile or sales more generally? Anything else? Just unmute if you want to. Or pop if anything else in the chat. Otherwise, it might be time for me to wish you in to enjoy the rest of your day. All right, we might leave it there. Thanks again for joining me and I look forward to seeing you online and at a future LinkedIn webinar. If it is of interest, feel free to share this information with anybody. I'm always updating the content and I'm looking forward to releasing LinkedIn for me and my career or business very, very soon. A very strategic and tactical book uh, that I really encourage you. Thank you, Francisco, for the clap there and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.